Hi, I'm Phyllis. My website is southernfrugal.com. Well, today we are in the last part of our candy making, for sure. So what we are going to make is, they're sometimes called, I think, haystacks, all kinds of different names. So we're just going to call them chow mein noodle candy. That's what we'll call it. Call it. So I'm using uh, at least part of a, uh, I think this is a four ounce, no, excuse me, five ounce box of chow mein noodles. And I actually took my potato masher and kind of mashed them down a little bit to break them up a little bit. And we're also using one cup of uh, pecan pieces. And I put these in the toaster oven on about 350 degrees for about 10 or 15 minutes until you can smell them. That way it brings out the taste of the pecans. And we're using two packs, four ounces each, of the white chocolate. Now the way you know it's white chocolate is it's got cocoa butter in it. So you've got a, just a little bit of a taste of chocolate. So y'all can have a look at my double boiler. Mr. Bucky bought this for me. It's an early Christmas present. It also has a steamer that goes in it. So this was an early Christmas present because he knew I needed it. All right, so we've got the uh, chocolate. Now we don't have our water boiling, we just have it hot. And we've got our chocolate melted, or our white chocolate. Let me move this closer. So all we're gonna do, this is just as easy as it can be. We're gonna dump in our noodles. And I'm not gonna use all of them, probably. Use about half of them. Not like that. And we're gonna go ahead and dump in our pecans. And then we're just going to stir it all up, mix it all together. And I'm going to leave it on this uh, double boiler because I don't want it to start getting hard. Just keep mixing them until you get all of them covered. And some people, there are all different kinds of recipes for this. You can use the butterscotch morsels, the chocolate morsels, and all that. I'm going to use my spatula to get all that white chocolate up off the bottom. mashing some of them up as I'm doing this. You don't hear them cracking. I don't like to have all those long ones sticking out. I like them kind of more compact. All right, I think we got this pretty well mixed up. Now we're going to start dropping them by tablespoon. And you can use, of course, wax paper or parchment paper. I'm happen to be using parchment paper. So we're going to just put them by tablespoon down on the parchment paper. Just kind of keep them together. still hot now. You kind of shake them if you can. You 
you know, we got uh, enough chocolate candy now. I don't think we need any more. Now this chocolate, of course, is going to, this uh, white chocolate is going to hold everything together. And you can just put them in the refrigerator or the freezer to get them to set. Yeah, I needed something else that wasn't, wasn't dark chocolate to be on my little uh, platter. Yeah, I hope y'all are all about ready for Christmas. And again, you want to leave this in the uh, double boiler. Now, to, you can make your own double boiler by just putting some kind of glass bowl over some hot water. Yeah, a lot of people use uh, peanuts with this and using the butterscotch morsels. This one's my favorite with the pecans. the chow mein noodles in the can, I just think they're fresher tasting rather than the kind of the plastic wrapper. So I'm going to see if I can get up a little more of this white chocolate. Kind of let it drip on them. And I did not thin the white chocolate at all. Actually, we've got one, two, three, four. We got 13, which means I can eat one. So we're going to let these cool a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and just put them in the freezer and get them um, to set real quick. And we'll be back and we'll taste one of these. I wanted to come back and talk about this double boiler steamer combination 
one of my early Christmas presents. I am totally loving it. So let me show it to you again. I bought when and washed out the pot. All right, so it's got three sections. And um, of course the lid. We got the steamer and then just regular double boiler, which of course I used to make the candy. And of course you could use it for multiple things. Let me show you this. This is something that Mr. Bucky did not realize. This is a steamer. Now I use a steamer mainly to uh, steam the uh, dates that I use in the smoothies. I just, I, I don't know where the dates came from or how they were handled. And so I like to steam them up to 180 degrees before we use them and then I freeze them. But look at this. You got three levels there. So you know what that means? That means this will fit in the smaller pot perfectly. Put the lid on, you can steam from a smaller pot or using the next level, you can steam in a bigger pot, just like that, bits in there. And also, if you want to do the double boiler somewhere else, that also will fit in my other pot. So I was very, very happy with this. Super happy, in fact. And this is how I used it for melting the chocolate. And then this is how I will use it to uh, steam the dates. And that will hold probably three of those little boxes of the dates and just steam them. It doesn't take any time, by the way, to steam them and get them up to 180 degrees. Here's what I do. I was going to show you all my meat thermometer, but I can't find it. That's what I use. And so when I'm steaming the dates, it just takes a little while. And I just, of course, I take the seeds out of the dates and just take the lid off and stick the uh, little meat thermometer. And when it gets up to 180 degrees, I just lift them out and then put them on a sheet to cool. And then I freeze them all in a big uh, gallon freezer bag. But anyway, let's put this back, back together. I can see many uses for this. Well, let me get that to go down there. And then the lid as a double boiler. This also means I can make that uh, seven minute icing where you have to have a double boiler. See, I burned up my double boiler. I don't even know how long ago, but I've been without one forever. But here's another thing you can do if you don't have a double boiler. What you can do is find a bowl that will fit in one of your pots, like that one. Just a regular bowl. And just don't, don't have your water boiling because then the steam all comes out in different places. Just have the, the water just before boiling is the best way to do it. So you can make puddings like this and everything. You can even put a lid on it. Yeah. So use it in some kind of glass bowl. Obviously, you can't use a plastic bowl. But uh, a lot of people use that as a double boiler, which is what I have done in the past after I burn up my I burn up the bottom pots, what happened. All right, so there it is, y'all. Let me get... Uh, and there's the steamer. I'm going to put that on top. I mean, I'm thinking you could fix rice. You could fix something like steamed broccoli, and then you could be heating up something up here in this part of it. Yeah, there's all kinds of options there. Anyway, let me see if I can get Mr. Bucket to come in and explain to you how he got this, because for him to have picked this out is pretty amazing. I, I don't think I could have picked this out, uh, because I wouldn't have thought of doing the find something that had was the uh, double boiler and the steamer. See those different rings? That's amazing. That's, it actually fits on several of my pots. So, yeah, let me see if I can go get him to talk about this. Hold on. All right, y'all, we got Mr. Bucky in here. Hold on, let me move around. So, 
we're going to let him tell you how he picked out the double boiler and the steamer. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, I wanted to get you something you needed. Yeah. So uh, what I did was I did a little research. And I went, of course, to Amazon uh, because I could find all the reviews there. And I did look at all the reviews that I could. I, I don't know, I spent a long time on that. And did you do that because you didn't know anything about double boilers? Well, I, not very much. I, I knew that you didn't have one. Right. And also that you needed a steamer. And so I said, well, I'm gonna see what I can find. So some of them didn't have steamers and some, you know, all of that. Did you look somewhere besides Amazon? Uh, on Walmart, yeah. You looked at Walmart? Yeah, yeah. And, um, so I, I just sort, sort of, after a process of elimination, I got down to what I what you see, and um, what was what what I gave you. Well, you didn't realize it would fit on my other pot. No, right? I didn't. Know. I knew it would might fit. On, well, I thought it might fit on one of those stock yeah, pots. Yeah, fits on both. No, not it won't fit on the stock pot on the two. Well, I know two, I know the pot that it came with. Yeah. But. Okay. Now you didn't get a Whitman sample of this. You're right. I did not say that. You better not have gotten Listen, one of this. Listen, do, don't I always give you a Whitman sampler? <sighs> I, I made Whitman samplers with all the chocolate I made this year. Okay? Yeah, well, I'm not going to answer that question until you open all your presents. All right, y'all. So, so I wanted to, to let y'all know how much research he did, and uh, you got to look at all of the research. Are, are you looking at me in the camera? Yeah, I see. Well, why are you doing that? Turn around, I'm right here. <laughs> All right. All right, so thank you very much for telling us. So you spent, what, two hours looking for a... That's right. Uh, and you were, were you looking for a steamer and a double boiler? I'm, that's right. I was looking for sort of a combination because uh, one without the other didn't didn't look right. Well, I've never seen one with both. All right, you got it now. So you did good. <laughs> okay. All right, we're going to, uh, you, you're going to get your... Whitman sampler that's for me, <laughs> but really for you again this year. Every year, it's been 30 some years. Every year, you get a Whitman sampler. All right, y'all. <laughs> we'll be back in just a minute. I'm going to be the one that tasted this because we've, we've got 13 of the candies, and there's not an. I'll, give, I'll take a bite and give can you. Can I wish these, these folks, you know, uh, folks uh, a you Merry can, Christmas? But we're going to do another video later. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. All right. Say bye. Bye. Okay, y'all, here's the candy. It's all uh, hardened and set and everything. And I'm going to taste of one. We've got 13 here. So I need 12. So uh, I'm going to taste of it, and I'm going to give Mr. Bucky a bite, too, after I take a bite. I love these because they've got pecans in them. All right. This is so good to go. Mm. I'm going to break off that little pecan and I'm going to eat that. He can have this. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Mm. Absolutely delicious. I'm going to give him that one. All right. So I've got my 12. And so nobody can come in here and eat any of these because I need all 12 of them. All right, y'all. I hope you will try these, and please try them with the pecans that you've toasted. They are so good. The pecan taste really comes out when you toast them. 10 or 15 minutes at the most in about a 350 degree oven until you can smell them. They're really good. Bye for now.